There's nothing like an encounter with a good-looking stranger or a run-in with a mysterious person that gets your heart pounding. Perhaps you'll even blush. Nothing like a little mystery to spice up our lives. Not only does it get our blood boiling, but it stimulates our imagination. But what if your encounter involved animals like these? Just look at the dangers that await you in the wild. Dueling dragons, sea sponges that eat flesh, ants that are actually wasps. One thing is certain your wild animal run-in won't be confusing at all. You'll be scared to death, we promise. Here are 15 terrifying animals you wouldn't want to encounter. These animals grow extremely rapidly and can get to two meters in just seven months. Komodo Dragon Tourists have flocked to see these beasts on the Komodo Dragon Island in Indonesia. And when they put on a show like this, smashing together in a battle royale, you can see what tourists would flock to see the wrestling matches for. And they sometimes last up to 15 minutes. The island is home to the world's largest lizards, the Komodo Dragon. There were approximately 176,000 visitors to Komodo National Park in recent years lined up to watch them in action. A member of the monitor lizard family, it's the largest species of lizard on the planet, growing to a maximum length of 10 feet in rare cases and weighing up to approximately 150 pounds. One bite and Komodo dragons have venom glands in their mouths that are loaded with toxins which can lower blood pressure, cause massive bleeding, prevent clotting and induce shock. The venom then quickens the loss of blood and sends prey into shock. And they have serrated teeth and powerful neck muscles, resulting in huge gaping wounds too. If you do manage to escape the jaws of a Komodo dragon, just wait. Dragons will calmly follow you for miles as the venom takes effect, using their keen sense of smell to zone in. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Geographic Cone Sea Snail The geographic cone is also known by the name Ambonia, a name derived from its discovery in the Gulf of Ambonia in Indonesia. This fairly large cone is the most dangerous of the cone shell species, and the results of this snail's sting could be your doom. The geographic cone is the most venomous of the 500 known cone snail species. Their venom, a complex concoction of hundreds of different toxins, is derived via a harpoon-like tooth propelled from an extendable proboscis. The cone snail's highly specialized teeth, known as radulae, work like a combination of hypodermic needle and harpoon to skewer and poison its prey. The cone snail is constantly regrowing this thing as well, so it's rarely without its deadly harpoon teeth. There's no antivenom for a cone snail sting, and treatment is limited to merely keeping victims alive until the toxins wear off. Historically, 65% of people stung by the geography cone snail die if they don't get to a hospital in time. The medicines that can neutralize the snail's conotoxin and venom do not exist yet. Ironically, among the compounds found in cone snail venom are proteins which, when isolated, have enormous potential as pain-killing drugs. <laughs> Sydney Funnel Web Spider Bites from all funnel web spiders are considered potentially dangerous, but a bite from the Sydney funnel web spider, that's a whole different kind of danger. The male spider's venom is five times as toxic as the female's. Furthermore, males wander, so there's a chance you could bump into one of these toxic terrors. They go on searching for mates, and because of that, spiders do come across humans. If you get bitten by the funnel web spider, you should seek help immediately. The venom is fast acting and potentially lethal if not treated in a matter of hours, although anti venom is now readily available at healthcare clinics. Symptoms of a Sydney funnel web spider bite range from breathing and circulatory problems, muscle spasms, and vomiting all within 30 minutes after being bitten. However, evidence has suggested that the effects can wear off after a few hours. As the name suggests, the Sydney funnel web spiders are found in Australia. While you'll generally find the males alone, females have been found to live in colonies of up to 100 spiders. They get their name because their webs have a small funnel-like tube leading to a silken burrow in which the spider hides and the spider waits in the funnel for prey. <laughs> Humboldt Squid In recent decades, the Humboldt Squid is on the move and experienced a massive expansion in geographic range. Historically, it was common from Peru to central Mexico, but now they stretch from the tip of Chile to Alaska. There's a very large population in the Gulf of California, Mexico, and this species is now common throughout California. In fact, Humboldt Squid have invaded the shallow waters of San Diego, tormenting scuba divers. Occasionally, they freak out beachgoers after washing up dead on the beaches as well. 
The carnivorous cephalopods, which weigh up to 100 pounds, came up from the depths with pods of them sizing up nervous divers. Some reported tentacles enveloping their masks and yanking at their cameras and gear. Scary stuff. That's why they're nicknamed Red Devils for their rust red coloring and apparently curious and cranky attitude. The squid hunts in schools of up to 1,200 individuals can swim up to 15 miles per hour and can skim even over the water to escape predators. Believe it or not, Humboldt squid have been used to decimate populations of small fish or smaller squids when their numbers explode. You probably don't want to be in the water when a school of Humboldt squids swim by. <laughs> Flesh-eating sea sponge A new candelabra-shaped carnivore has been spotted in the deep oceans of California. The meat-eating species was dubbed the harp sponge because it resembles a harp turned on its side. Most sponges are suspension feeders, filtering bacteria and microscopic organisms from the surrounding water. Harp sponges, however, capture much larger prey, like copepods and other crustaceans, with the velcro-like hooks on their body surfaces. Once the hooks have ensnared the sponge's prey, it secretes a digestive membrane that surrounds and engulfs the captured prey, breaking it down until it can absorb it through its pores. The barbed hook snares crustaceans as they are swept into branches by deep-sea currents. The sponges cling to soft, muddy sediment on the ocean floor with root-like rhizoids. Researchers believe the harp sponge evolved this elaborate, candelabra-like structure to increase the surface area it exposes to currents so it can capture more prey. Makes sense. A research team discovered the sponge in 2000 while exploring with a remotely operated vehicle nearly two miles beneath the ocean surface. <laughs> The Velvet Ant Is having one a little bit of every superpower better than yielding just one super duper power? When it comes to the Velvet Ant, this might be the case. Their name is misleading. The insects are actually wasps. The wingless females look more like a large hairy ant. They've earned the nickname Cow Killer and they're known for their extremely painful stings. But the wasps also have other insect powers, so to speak. Velvet ant defense mechanisms include a strong, tank-like exoskeleton and foul-smelling chemical excretions. Are they the masters of the ant universe? Perhaps. Their tough exoskeleton prevents injuries because it's too tough. Their exoskeleton is also rounded, so stings or bites bounce off the abdomen. They also make a squeal sound by rubbing two parts of their abdomen together, and they taste bad and stink too. Researchers set up feeding trials with potential trials to see if anything could actually eat a velvet ant. They used a lizard, shrew, mole, birds, and an American toad. None of the predators managed to eat a live ant, except for a single toad. It stopped breathing for 20 seconds. Lizards are accustomed to eating venomous and stinging insects, but it couldn't handle the velvet ant. A mole attempted to eat a velvet ant, got stung, and began thrashing about. Giant Pacific Football Fish The football fish form a family of globose deep-sea angler fishes, in which a modified luminescent fin ray acts as a lure for other fish. They are found in tropical and subtropical waters of the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Ocean. A beachgoer found this impressively rarely spotted fish with a monstrous-looking body shaped like a football washed up at a California beach fully intact. Their flesh is gelatinous, but thickens in the larger females, which also possess a covering of bucklers, round bony plates each with a medium spine. The creature is most likely a female Pacific football fish, one of more than 200 species of anglerfish around the world, typically found thousands of feet deep in the ocean. While the fish itself is not rare, officials said it's extremely rare to see one intact, but it's only females who possess a long stalk on the head with bioluminescent tips used as a lure to entice prey in the darkness of waters as deep as 3,000 feet. Originating above or slightly in advance of the small eye is the fishing rod and at its end a bioluminescent bulbous fishing lure. Strange, wonderful, and scary. Their teeth, like pointed shards of glass, are transparent, and their large mouth is capable of sucking up and swallowing prey the size of their own body. The Shoebill Shoebills have been a beloved species for a long time. They appear in ancient Egyptian art, and Arabs call the stork Abu Markub, which means the father of a slipper. The bill is gigantic, looks like footwear, and can decapitate crocodiles. The shoebill birds are native to the marshes of East Africa. This masterful hunter, an endangered species, is a reclusive menace to the inhabitants of the lands it occupies. That goofy-looking bill on the face of that scary bird may look dinosaur-esque, but it's actually a lethal tool belonging to the shoebill. Although there are no dangerous 
danger to humans, they're not to be played with. These apex predator birds do prefer bigger prey. They eat big fish like lungfish, eels, and catfish, and also crazy stuff like Nile monitor lizards, snakes, and baby crocodiles. Shoebill storks are patience personified, waiting for hours on end, sometimes submerged up to their waist, with their prey completely unaware of the grim fate that peers down at them from above. Then suddenly, the shoebill lunges forward, driving its razor-sharp bill into the silt, engulfing its victim entirely. Though not a very heavy bird, the biggest might well be 16 pounds, the shoebill stork can reach nearly 5 feet in height and their wings can stretch to no more than 7 feet. That's a big scary bird. <laughs> the world's most dangerous snake, but the inland taipan has reached mythical status because of the remoteness of its habitat and the added challenge that it lives and hunts for its prey in deep, cracked clay. This shy serpent is rarely encountered in its remote, semi-arid Australian homeland. The inland taipan is only found in this area of South Australia and in far western Queensland. As the seasons change and food is abundant, the snakes feast on rodents. As the harsh outback takes its toll and the food disappears, inland taipan are well equipped for the long periods of little or no food. Don't let the shyness fool you, it makes a threat display by raising its forebody in a tight, low S-shaped curve with its head facing the offender. Should the offender ignore the warning, the snake will strike. If the world's most dangerous snake bites you, expect a headache, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, collapse, and paralysis. It's extremely potent and is rated as the most toxic of all snake venoms. The inland taipan snake will strike, making a single bite or several quick bites, but still, a single bite from one of these impressive reptiles has enough venom to kill a hundred fully grown men. Coconut Crab Invaders More commonly known as the coconut crab, it's the largest terrestrial arthropod in the world. The coconut crab is native to a variety of islands in the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Feeding is no small task. The coconut crab eats anything it can get its claws on. It'll go after fruit, vegetation, dead birds and such. It's been observed hunting other crabs, ambushing young chickens, and even domesticated house pets. The coconut crab is known for its ability to use its massive pincers to crack open coconuts, exerting a force of about 700 142 pounds, but the good news for humans is that the crabs usually don't use their claws on us. As the name suggests, the coconut crab's main source of food is coconuts. As an arthropod, the coconut crab wears its skeleton on the outside and must shed it as it grows. So once a year, it crawls into the safety of a burrow and moats. It's highly vulnerable once it steps out of this rigid shell. So to hasten the development of new armor, it consumes its old exoskeleton. It grows remarkably slowly taking up to 120 years to reach full size. Adult coconut crabs are about 40 inches from leg tip to leg tip and weigh about 10 pounds. And did you know they're also known as the robber crab due to its curious propensity for stealing silverware and pots and pans? <sighs> Giant Sea Spiders the giant sea spider is the stuff of nightmares, its leg span of 6 inches to over 1 foot in length. There are two reasons why arachnophobes shouldn't fear this beast. It lives at the bottom of the ocean, and it's not actually a spider. But like true spiders, some sea spiders have 8 legs. But not all do. Some have 10 and even 12. Many sea spiders are carnivorous, dining on worms, jellyfish, and sponges. They feed by sticking their proboscis into soft animals and sucking out the juices. Their bodies don't appear to to have much else apart from their long legs and proboscis, they don't have much room in their bodies, so their guts and reproductive organs reside in their spindly legs, and they don't have gills or lungs. To cope, they absorb oxygen through their cuticle, or shell-like skin. Inside those long legs are tube-like digestive systems similar to intestines. Sea spiders have been around for a very, very long time. This group has thrived and diversified for almost 500 million years. These animals live in many different parts of the world, from Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific coast of the United States, to the Mediterranean Sea and the Caribbean Sea, to the North and South Poles. They're most common in shallow waters, but can be found as deep as 23,000 feet. Megalera Garuda, King of the Wasps Will you be going outside to your garden knowing these might be hunting close by? Don't worry. 
Megalera, aka the King of Wasps, was found in Indonesia on the island of Sulawesi, and a live version of this Queen of the Wasps has yet to be found. The species is named after Garuda, the national symbol of Indonesia. This species has never been observed while alive or in flight, nor had any other raw footage of one alive ever been seen. Every year, we seem to be hearing about a new species of insect or bug, some big, some deadly. It's just kind of mean at this point. Well, this one is no exception. It's the mega extreme version from the Lorene family, or digger wasps. This new version is called the Megalera Garuda, after an Indonesian icon, part human, part eagle, known as the king of birds in Hindu mythology. And it's two inches of big bad wasps, black as pitch with sickle-shaped jaws. Nothing is known about its biology or behavior, but the males of the Megalera Garuda are distinctly larger than the females, and those jaws are even bigger on the boys. The jaws are assumed to be used to crush prey, and almost nothing is known about the sting of the king of the wasps. <laughs> the Bobbit Worm Anyone born before 1990 will remember the story of Lorena Bobbit, who in 1993 made world news for taking a kitchen implement to her ex-husband's Bobbit Worm. If you must know the gory details, it's just an internet search away. The real Bobbit Worm is a whole other thing, and they're terrifying. Found in warmer oceans around the world, this terrifying worm buries itself into sediment on the seafloor, its mouth exposed with its huge scissor-like jaws open wide, plus five antennae protruding from its head that act like tripwires. If a fish had accidentally brushed past one of these tripwires, game over. The Bobbit Worm's razor-sharp mouth parts strike so hard the prey is sometimes sliced clean in two. With violent tugs, the worm then drags the victim down into its lair, where it eats the fish alive. They also use their sharp teeth to chew through the coral reef, but never touch a bobbit worm. Their body is composed of many nerve-damaging bristles. They will use these bristles to help them move around, but they also are capable of delivering a painful sting, causing permanent nerve damage in humans, leaving the portion of your body feeling numb for the rest of your life. A true monster of the deep. <laughs> The Gila Monster You can find these iconic beasts above the Mexican border in southern, central, and western Arizona. You might also find specimens in neighboring regions of California, Utah, Nevada, or New Mexico. But do your best to steer clear of the Gila Monster. This reptile has one of the worst reputations in the reptile world. These animals, once they feel threatened, will open their mouths and hiss. It's a direct warning that clearly says you're in danger. But some people don't get the message, and people do get bit. Its venom is made by a row of glands in the lizard's lower jaw, small grooves in the teeth only increase the venom flow, so if it bites you, they're very strong, and the lizard might not loosen its grip for several seconds. It may even chew and chew so that the venom goes deeper into the bite wound. Their size is intimidating too. Adult gila monsters can measure two feet long and weigh five pounds or more. These kinds of proportions render this species larger than any other indigenous lizard within the U.S. There are legends of this savage beast spitting venom, leaping several feet in the air to attack, stinging with its tongue, and killing people with gusts of poisonous breath. Don't believe the stories, but do know before you go, be very aware when you're in Gila Monster territory. The Big Fin Squid Last but certainly not least, the mother of all squids, and not just one, five of them. Five squids from the Magna Pinna genus, known as big fins, were spotted in deep sea surveys off southern Australia at a depth of one and a half miles. Big fin squids are one of the deep sea's more ethereal, unusual creatures first discovered in 1907. Their fins are up to 90% of the length of the body, and they have next level long arms. Most remarkable was the length of the elastic tentacles, which has been estimated at up to 15 to 20 times the mantle length. And as you can see, the squid often will hold some of the arms at a 90-degree angle from the side of the body, which gives them the appearance of having elbows. The distinctive elbow-like kink is another oddball characteristic. It could be a way to prevent their spaghetti-like tentacles from getting entangled. The appendages come with microscopic suckers that can land them in a sticky situation. Some have been known to get stuck to submersibles. Scientists believe that they feed by dragging their arms and tentacles along the seafloor, grabbing organisms off the floor. But they may use a simple trapping technique, waiting for prey to bump into their super long arms. Imagine this beast staring down at you. No doubt, a terrifying animal encounter. Mm-hmm.